Hi all. In this video, let's learn about JavaScript. Some of the interview questions. This is a part ninth of JavaScript interview questions. So let let's discuss about some of these questions. So the first question is: Is JavaScript synchronous or asynchronous? So before learning this, we need to understand synchronous and asynchronous. What is meant by synchronous? So if you are trying to communicate with your friend in a mobile, so then that communication would be a synchronous communication if you say hello he would be replying you back with the hello immediately so you will the communication will be in sync so this type of communication is known as synchronous communication so whereas coming to the asynchronous communication if you write an email to your friend so you take some time to draft your email so thereafter you will send your email once he receives the email whenever he sees that email then he will uh, read that email and he will be replying back so this type of email communication we can consider it as an asynchronous communication so this is the main first of all we need to understand the synchronous and asynchronous now we'll discuss about in terms of javascript javascript is always synchronous it is single threaded and blocking so it means what does it exactly means if you are trying to execute a javascript block of code so in that page then no other javascript code would be executed so everything would be in blocked okay so usually this happens to the javascript so whereas if you have an huge uh, number of script so which takes more time to execute then there we are going to block the rendering so in order to overcome these type of problems javascript sometimes need to uh, work as an asynchronous so we have some operations like uh, we have some uh, topics like uh, callbacks promises and async wait with the help of these concepts we are sometimes making this javascript to work as asynchronous so that we are not blocking the rendering so this is what a uh, uh, javascript synchronous and asynchronous is all about so coming to the second try finally with returns so let me explain you that with the code so we know the try catch finally we use all these these things to handle the javascript errors let me tell you brief the flow first so if you have any error in the try catch that in the try block that would be going to the catch block and thereafter the finally block so this is the normal flow if there is no error in the try block then it will directly go to the finally block so this is a normal workflow of the try catch finally so what if you you wrote an a written statement in the try block you wrote a written statement whether the finally block would be executed or not so this is the main question so the thing is if you written anything from a function usually if you written anything from a function will be returning back to the called function so wherever you call that function will be returning back to that function whenever you see a written statement in a function but the case with the try finally the written works in a different way for example if you write a written statement in the try block before returning it will go to the finally block once and it will execute the statements in the finally block so thereafter it will return the one so now the output will be like we'll be getting finally in the console and one because we are we are going to return one and we are consoling that when we call this function you are consoling so that's the reason when even if you return anything the flow will go to the finally block and it will execute and thereafter it will return the value so what if if i write some one more written statement in the finally so let me write one more written statement in the finally block so when now the output will be varying now when uh, it comes to the try block we are trying to return some statement so before executing returning from the try block we have learned that it will execute the finally block so before returning it will go to the finally block and now it will execute the console and thereafter it will return 3 okay once it returns 3 we will not going to execute anything from the try block so now if you have the return statement in the try in the finally block we will be getting finally and 3 as a output so this is a interesting and uh, you know in, important interview question related to the try finally with the return statement hope you understand this flow workflow so coming to the third interview question like a duplicate named parameters so for example in a street mode so we have a function here okay i have used three parameters a b a here if you see we have a, a repeated duplicate parameter names okay i am calling this method passing three values right? this is a usual thing in a street mode what happens 
we'll be getting an error because it will not allow the duplicate parameter names. So we'll be getting an error in a state mode. But if it is not in a state mode, then wh what would be the output? So internally what happens is, so internally it would be in this way, where a is equal to one. So initially we are passing one to a. So this happens. So next what we're writing where b is equal to two. So next, so this two will go to this B. This one would go to this A, this two would be catching this B. And now this three would be catching this A. So now it will be A is equal to, A is equal to three. Now, what happens? So we in, with where we can uh, reassign the variables, I mean, recreate the variables, redeclare it and reassign it. So that's the reason in the A now we have three, that's it. So now we are printing, if you print, we'll be getting three comma, two comma three because in the a we have three it means the third parameter would override the value of the first parameter so internally this happens so that's the reason we'll be getting three two three as the output that is second option hope you understand this duplicate named parameter so coming to the last one the double dot so let me do this in the browser fine so let's see so if you're writing 27 dot two string so I'm writing 27 dot two string. So here what happens? So we'll be getting an error. So the reason why we are getting error here is, so it will think that 27 dot something. JavaScript compiler will think we are writing some decimal number, okay? But it will think that after dot, it will think that 27 dot three, 27 dot five, like that we may keep, but we have kept one method. So that's the reason it is throwing an syntactical error. It thought that this is a decimal number. But as soon as we kept this two string, it has thrown an error because it is it, it thought that this is a decimal number, incomplete decimal number. So that it thrown an error. What if, if you use double dot? So for the first dot, it will think, so JavaScript compiler will think, so this happens. So we'll get the correct value. What happens here with the double dot is, with the single dot JavaScript compiler is confused whether this is a decimal number or we are trying to access some property. So that's the reason we got this error. So whereas if you keep double dot, this is a valid thing. There is no nothing error here. So how JavaScript compiler is going to understand this is for the first dot, it will understand this is a decimal point, decimal number. For the second dot, it will understand it is we are trying to invoke some method or a property. So that's the reason we got an exact output. So this is uh, about the double dot operator. Hope you understand the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos.